So good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this. I hope some of you are lucky enough to be sitting with an iPad by a fireplace, um, as if we needed some other adventure this year in 2020. We got a snowstorm last night. But um, hopefully we're all inside and warm. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about uh, this book that came out a few months ago uh, that was uh, co-written by myself and also our uh, county clerk. I hope you all know uh, Christine Giordano Hamlin. Uh, I will tell you that um, how this began uh, several years ago at one of the events that she sponsors that the county clerks have sponsored for some time now, Archives and History Day. I approached Christine and I had this idea for several years that I had researched an awful lot about local history and had referenced a lot of the, the famous books that we all know but I didn't know much about their authors with the exception of a few folks that I had met, like for instance, George Moss here on the top right. Um, and lucky for me, Christine embraced the idea and we uh, decided to uh, come out with this book. Um, and coincidentally, and it was not attended this way since Archives and History Day was virtual this year uh, and we don't have the famous uh, catalogs that comes out every year with the, uh, the day, uh, the book came out uh, in, the, in the fall. So um, I had a lot of fun with it. We, we profiled in here, uh, Christy and I, about 50 folks uh, living and dead. Um, they are, uh, by no means was this intended to profile everyone that ever wrote about Monmouth County. That would have been an enormous task. Um, so we uh, certainly put in uh, the, the people that I think you'll recognize and perhaps some of you won't. So we're gonna, we're gonna go on to our presentation here. Um, a lot of you probably are familiar with this map, 1864. Monmouth County is about 200 years old when this map was published. And of course, Freehold right here in the middle, our county seat, uh, where is uh, the Monmouth County Historic Association's headquarters as well. Um, you can see that we have quite a, quite a large area. Uh, by the middle of the 19th century, it was quite popular um, and populated. Um, and from around this time, uh, people started to write its history. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of those folks. We're not going to, you'll be happy to hear, talk about all 50 of the people in the book, but we'll talk to you about how you can get a copy later on. Um, don't know how many of you know, but we have a, an official Monmouth County song uh, that was written in the 1930s. Um, as far as I could determine, it's the only of the 21 counties in New Jersey that has its own song. Uh, you'll recognize the pictures on the front, no doubt, of this song sheet. Um, you might not know too much about the folks, the uh, brother or sister team who wrote this song, however. Um, I was lucky enough one time presenting in Eatontown at their historical society when I introduced this idea of this Mom County song, and a gentleman raised his hand and said to me, yeah, we used to sing it in grammar school every single day. Um, mercifully, I will not sing it for you tonight. Um, but there it is. And by the way, we uh, published it on the inside back cover of the book. So if you are a, a musician, you can uh, sing along to the Monmouth County song. Um, the brother and sister team who wrote this as adults, not in this younger picture, Cyril and uh, Gertrude Smack, um, are intrinsic to Monmouth County history in and of themselves, not just because they wrote this song. Uh, it turns out that Cyril Smack, as a, as a grown man here, became quite prominent in the Shore area, Seabright. He was a sea captain, he was a carpenter, he was a town councilman, quite an accomplished guy besides a songwriter. Um, and his sister uh, has her own claim to fame, Gertrude, married this guy, um, I will assure you, much, much later in her life, Harold Pappy Seaman, which is a great name for this guy, because Pappy Seaman, man who invented in 1922 the famous Jersey skiff, and there's the very first one that he produced was called PJ. So later in their lives, uh, Harold and Gertrude were married. So right there in those three people, you've got an encapsulation of an awful lot of Monmouth County history. So I want to start with some of the early Monmouth County historians, uh, some of whom you'll probably recognize at least by name. Um, these folks that I'm featuring here have passed from our scene. Uh, some of them were contemporary 
uh, with me and probably a lot of you, uh, and you may have known them. Uh, I was privileged to know a couple of them myself. We're going to pick a few here to talk about what they did for our Monmouth County history. Um, George Beekman, I think you'll probably recognize that name. It's a famous yellow book in most cases that he wrote uh, about the Dutch heritage of Monmouth County. And as I hope a lot of you know, that Monmouth County was founded primarily by English and Dutch citizens and a good sprinkling, an awfully good sprinkling, uh, un unfortunately for them, of African-Americans who were brought in as enslaved people. Uh, during the early days of our of our county. Um, that's the book that uh, George Beekman, one of the books that he wrote. Um, he, by his name, you could probably tell, had Dutch heritage himself. Uh, and this book is an incredibly great resource to find out about the Dutch ancestry of our county. Um, and unless you're Dutch, you'll find some of the repetitious names uh, often confusing, but Beekman does a pretty good job of outlining the the chronology of what they did for Monmouth County. Um, in Middletown uh, was uh, not his house, but the, what was called the Beekman house, part of his family's house. Uh, it's gone now, but it brings to mind um, that all over uh, Middletown, Homedale, where I used to live, you've pr probably seen the name Shank, sometimes called Skank, uh, which is a Dutch name. Uh, there are many, many uh, Skanks and Shanks in our history and also in George Beekman's family. Um, turns out that this guy here, who a lot of you will recognize and for I know might be on this call, is one of our historical commissioners, Peter Van Nordwick. And when Peter was a young boy growing up in Middletown, he tells me he spent time exploring the old Beekman property and other properties. And this picture of him that I took with, a, with an old deed uh, was taken at his house where he's got an awfully uh, informative and tremendous collection of Monmouth County um, historic documents and trivia of all kinds, and a lot of things that he salvaged from old homes and properties as they were destroyed over the years. Um, so Peter uh, is also in the book, um, and as you can tell from his name, he claims Dutch heritage as well. So um, try to here show you uh, some contemporary historians with some historic historians as well. Um, uh, probably a lot of you, if not most of you, know these two folks, right? Claire French and the late George Moss, uh, who I was privileged to meet uh, many, many years ago. Uh, tremendous figure in our history. Um, George has got deep roots in Monmouth County. His family were hoteliers in Long Branch and then Seabright, uh, and he grew up. And if you have read anything about his biography, and, and you can get a sketch of it in the book, uh, you'll learn how much he loved this county and what he did for it with his historic works. I think probably as best I can remember, the first book of his that I ever saw was this. And this is wonderful iconographic work of beautiful woodcuts and prints uh, about, of course, Sandy Hook down to Nauvoo, you know, a little bit Monmouth Beach area that he put together. Um, earlier in my life, I was fortunate to uh, be invited to his home. And, and a lot of folks that had that same privilege uh, walked in and when he brought you into his dining room, strewn on that table were all his various projects, pictures and documents and things that he was putting together um, that he had accumulated over the years. And uh, just a fascinating uh, guy in his own right and had, had done a lot for us. Um, you may even recognize this boat, this book rather, with a boat on it. Uh, another one of his many uh, that he's written. I would mention too that in the uh, To Preserve and Protect, not only did we list the uh, bibliography of all of the people we feature uh, who wrote about Monmouth County, but in the back, in an addendum, we also added any books that they wrote about other than Monmouth County topics. So I would urge you, especially when it comes to George Moss and folks like that, to, to look at their bibliography and if you don't know their books, to find out about them. They're just wonderful treasures. Um, Claire French, of course, uh, has done a lot for the county, former county clerk, and Christine uh, Hanlon, my co-author's uh, predecessor. Um, she's featured in our book for all the great things uh, of historic content that she did during her service in our county. Um, 
Among others, she had uh, under her purview was the Monmouth County Archives. You might recognize this as the Manalapan uh, branch of the Monmouth County Library, one of our co-sponsors tonight. And the archives are in the basement um, and it's a fabulous place to go, um, I assume by appointment now. And if you're looking for a specific Monmouth County history, particularly government history, that would be a, a great place to visit um, if you know about it. Um, another book that uh, George uh, Moss wrote um, and uh, published, of course, were Those Innocent Years. And these are images from the Pock. The Pock brothers were German brothers who had photography studios in New York and Long Branch and Ocean Grove in the 19th century, early 20th century. And George and his co-author, Karen Schnitzvon, uh, co-authored this book, which is a fascinating look at uh, our history uh, later, in, later in, in our time. And Karen, uh, who uh, is an author in her own right with many, many books about Monmouth County history, and you can see some of them here, has, uh, has moved away and she's out in Colorado now. Um, and we're in touch from time to time. So she's also contributed and is therefore part of um, the book that we put together, the profiles of these historians. This was uh, an interesting uh, man for me to research because I knew nothing originally about uh, William Horner you could probably recognize from his middle name that he's got deep New Jersey roots to part of the Stockton family. Um, and really fascinating guy, he was born in Matawan, kind of the mid 19th century, uh, became an attorney and practiced in New York City uh, and he commuted and apparently didn't like it very much and didn't spend a lot of time. He was a real estate lawyer and that wasn't uh, something that he fancied. And so he began to do a lot of genealogy research, starting with his own family, of course, um, and then branched out. And over time in, um, in his life, he uh, collected, and these are uh, some samples in the archives of the tremendous number of notebooks that he kept uh, meticulously um, inscribed with all he was finding out about the genealogy of people in Monmouth County. Um, in fact, he had so much material that he became a newspaper columnist and he wrote for this paper, um, which I hope you know through uh, newspapers.com is available and it's a great source of information uh, in the 19th century, particularly of, about Monmouth County history. And, and um, Bill Stockton, uh, Bill Horner, I should say, wrote for, uh, for this a lot of columns, historical columns, which he eventually put into a book in 1932 called This Old Mammoth of Ours, um, which I kind of think is very florid writing, uh, some combination of history and, and myth, uh, and, and it's beautifully rendered. Um, and uh, it, it kind of put his stake in the ground as, as one of the early Mammoth County historians. Um, you've seen this book, I hope, and if you haven't, it's, it's wor well worthwhile to take out of a library or or to buy online if you, if you want it. Uh, some beautiful writing in there. Um, in it, as you can see, he did a lot more than just write about history. Um, anecdotes, so-called, sometimes myths, um, are a part of this book and, and they're just fascinating to read. And then something really strange, at least to me, happened uh, to this man's life. Uh, turns out that he, in late in life, was living again back in Matawan with his mother who was elderly and she passed away and it seems to have put him in a deep depression. And the next thing that I found out was horrible. Um, he committed suicide. Um, stories at the time say that perhaps he was depressed about his mother's death. Um, and uh, it's quite striking. Apparently he tried to hang himself and when that didn't work, he shot himself. So. Uh, I was pretty startled to read that and um, just an interesting story to a man's life who had done a lot for us. Uh, I'll bet everybody on this call knows who that is. Our recently retired and greatly missed uh, County Archivist Gary Saretsky. Um, he may be retired from the archives, but he's certainly still active in a lot of things that he does. Um, among other things, way back in the beginning, all those years ago, 
he was instrumental in starting the wonderful archives in history day that was typically every October except this one um, in uh, at the uh, downstairs at the library in, in Manalapan. A great event that those of us who care about our history uh, go to every year to hear great stories, uh, re meet friends again, and exchange ideas and find out what projects people are working on. Gary was always at the center of that, of course. Um, as I mentioned before, one of the highlights, and I'm sure everybody here who's ever got Archives Day uh, has collected these as I do and, and treasure them. The catalogs that came out with Archives Day every year just have, uh, in this particular case, the women of Mama, uh, just fantastic vignettes about the particular topic of the Archives Day. Um, and you can always use those to research what's behind those at the archives themselves. Um, Gary did a lot more than just um, what sounds like uh, a fairly dry existence of being an archivist. Uh, he sponsored many, many events um, out of the headquarters, uh, including this uh, that I attended, Preservation Week, where he had a series of lectures, some of which he gave on how to preserve documents and photographs and all kinds of things based on his many, many years of experience uh, as an archivist. Um, here he is with my co-author, Christine, um, in the archives with um, one of the other uh, mock-ups of the catalogs on World War I um, and with a, with a poster there in the back, as you can see. Um, as I mentioned, Gary is by no means retired from uh, active historical pursuits. Uh, he's for years uh, been uh, an accomplished photographer in his own right uh, and has done histories and index, the indices of various uh, New Jersey photographers. And uh, you can certainly Google that and find out uh, a lot about uh, what he's accomplished and, and listed to reveal how important the photographers were from the mid 19th century on to our history. Um, a lot of you also may know my friend Don Burden, uh, former mayor of, of Shrewsbury for many, many years um, and a historian in his own right. Here's a picture of him and some other folks at uh, his retirement day a few years ago that the town threw for him behind the uh, municipal fire department. Um, truly a, a, a man who loves and reveres history and puts his money where his mouth is because he has been for many, many years and continues to be the driving force uh, and with his wife, Mary Lee, uh, behind the Shrewsbury Historic Society. That museum at the Four Corners in Shrewsbury is uh, by appointment only these days, but uh, a wonderful place with history more than just this now rather small borough of Shrewsbury, because as I hope a lot of you know, the original Shrewsbury Township uh, was virtually all of Monmouth County at one point back in our beginnings. So this treasure trove of, of uh, books and information and all kinds of artifacts is well worth a visit. Um, there he is with another character outside the, the place, and you can always uh, go online, and um, Don was most often and gracious to uh, allow you to come in, and he'll give you a tour of the society, time permitting. Um, I owe him a particular debt of gratitude because the first book that he and I uh, did together um, was the first book I ever published, was the story of Shrewsbury Revisited. And we called it that because we took uh, inspiration from this book, which locals all call the Little Blue Book, of course, which had been written years ago um, by committee of the story of Shrewsbury, the original township, not the current borough uh, or the township of Shrewsbury today. Um, and we updated it. We included it and reprinted that book uh, in the new version. Um, and um, we had a lot of fun doing that. That's, that's available too at the, uh, at the museum should you, uh, should you want to find out about our history. Um, I will tell you that historians uh, in Monmouth County are all over and I was fortunate and am fortunate to know some of the ones who uh, kind of hang out and are instrumental in, in uh, Monmouth University today. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know Dr. Walter Grayson, uh, who is a chair of the Department of Education um, and an African-American scholar in his own right, 
having done many, many books, um, including this one, The Path to Freedom. Um, his family and he uh, originally from Freehold, uh, and he does a whole and has done a whole lot of research into the African American experience um, in that very crucial part of New Jersey. Uh, recently, he's come out with the co-author of the uh, cities Imagine the African Diaspora uh, in Media and History. So he's not only interested as a scholar in what happened, but he's interested in his writing and constantly talking and lecturing about what's happening today. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased to, to have him as a friend. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know another of our professors at Monmouth University, the dynamic Melissa Ziobro, who, um, if she's on tonight, will hate when I say this, but I don't believe the woman ever sleeps. Uh, and I know she's got two children who are all excited by Christmas this week, but uh, Melissa is just this dynamo when it comes to history and anything related, especially to Monmouth County history. She was before uh, she became a professor at Monmouth University, um, the historian at Fort Monmouth before it was decommissioned. And in fact, you could see here a book she wrote um, that came out of uh, her researches and all the uh, writings that she had done about Fort Monmouth. She's also done a one of these terrific audible courses that, that you've probably heard of from time to time about what she calls the dollar princesses. Um, I don't know if you know this, and I won't steal much of her thunder, except to say that there was a kind of a Downton Abbey effect, if you will, where um, American women of some um, uh, means uh, were marrying fading, if you will, diplomats, or I should even say um, royalty in Europe uh, during the late, 18, uh, late 19th and early 20th century. And she writes about these, and including some uh, one one woman from, um, believe it or not, Shrewsbury. So that, that's an interesting thing to to research if you want to find out what Melissa's done. Um, and I don't mean to short shrift her; she's done an awful lot of other things too. Um, a lot of you, of course, know Dr. Rich Veit, uh, who was archaeologist, historian, uh, chair of that department, uh, and recently within the last year has uh, risen to the post of dean at uh, Monmouth University. And just one of our treasures um, for his contributions to Monmouth County. Um, this book, though not specifically about Monmouth County, I highly recommend he wrote it with Maxine Lurie, who's from Seton Hall, uh, two really terrific historians. And it's a book that I refer to a lot when I wanna find out specifics about New Jersey and the bibliography itself is uh, worth the price of admission. Uh, Rich is always, and in fact, told me today in an email that next week he'll be at the Parker House in Little Silver conducting some archeological researches. So he's by no means a desk historian. Um, uh, this book, of course, punly titled, titled Digging New Jersey was one of his um, terrific look into our history, particularly the uh, history of the Lenape Native Americans that were here long before any of us got here. Um, uh, this is a picture I took uh, at uh, actually the Parker House uh, when uh, Rich was conducting a, uh, a research project there with some graduate students, um, I think about a year ago. Uh, but he's all over and he's a, just a terrific guy. I'm sure a lot of you have heard him speak, I think. As a matter of fact, uh, he'll be part of this lecture series if he hasn't been there already. Um, one of the things that Christine and I uh, uncovered, if you will, was that, that historians who I typically think of as writers and researchers and printers of books um, come in all kinds of different flavors. And so in this book, I um, pay, pay tribute to a couple of folks uh, that I call visual media historians. Um, I'll bet a lot of you know Kathy and George Severini, uh, probably from Dorn's Classic Images, which you can look up online. But there's a great backstory to this because Kathy is actually Kathy Dorn before she married George. And those of you of a certain age, like me, will remember Dorn's Photoshop in Red Bank, uh, founded by her father, Dan, and his father, Dan. And way back at the beginning of the 20th century, her grandfather uh, was taking 
not only still images uh, and aerial photography, by the way, from a little plane that they flew out of the Red Bank Airport, um, but also producing little short movies of places like Keensburg and Long Branch in, in uh, Monmouth County. And these uh, over time accumulated as did all the still photos. You can see one of them up there of Asbury Park um, that when the uh, Photoshop was closed down 20 or 30 years ago, uh, Kathy and George curated those images, thousands and thousands of priceless images over the years. You can go online to DorranceClassicImages.com and see many, many of them. Um, they'll be glad to reproduce them for you. Um, and I think it's no secret now that those images are now housed where I think they belong uh, at Monmouth University. George and Kathy are overseeing the project there. Um, so just uh, two terrific people have done an awful lot for our history. Um, and George and Kathy did an awful lot for me um, because unabashedly I'm showing you another one of the books that I've done this time with George with that classic image of Asbury Park on the cover, um, which is of course Adorn's classic image photograph. Um, another one of who I consider our great media historians, um, although there's a caveat here in a second, is John Schneider with, um, as you can tell, uh, no holes barred when he wants to get some, some uh, videography. Uh, he'll do anything to get it. Um, and John has been recording um, our history uh, visually uh, and online uh, through his own uh, website and online uh, media enterprise called Rara and Bayshore Living Now. Uh, talks about primarily the north part of Monmouth County and our shore. Uh, that said, he recently came out with this book from the History Press, uh, which is, uh, I recommend it, a historical journey because it's Raritan Bay, which takes in, of course, not only Sandy Hook and the shore uh, towns, Bayshore towns, but Staten Island and the entryway to New York Harbor. Uh, and he's done a deep dive into that history. And it's uh, really, really worthwhile. Um, you can also go online and John's got a whole series of uh, 20 and 30 minute interviews with all kinds of fascinating Monmouth County figures. In fact, uh, I was pleased that he started to interview and uh, film the folks that are in the To Preserve and Protect book. So you can see them live uh, if you choose. Um, a quite prominent Monmouth County historian who does not actually live in Monmouth County, that's John Schneider on the left, interviewing at Tinton Falls, um, uh, a fellow named Graham Russell Hodges. Uh, Russ Hodges is a professor, doctorate uh, uh, up at uh, in both history, up in Cornell, but he spent a lot of his uh, formative years while he was earning his doctorate at the Monmouth County Historic Association, uh, writing and researching. And as a result of that, came out with what I consider one of the classic, classic books of Monmouth County history, Slavery and Freedom in the Rural North, about, as you would suspect, our fraught history with African-American slavery and beyond. Uh, and he's done a number of studies of Black history since um, that time, including this book he came out with last year, which I recommend. Uh, obviously, it uh, entails more than just Monmouth County history. Uh, but it'll tell you and me who did not know a lot about the folks, um, African-American folks who contributed mightily to our history. Um, he, Graham Hodges has been inspirational to me. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a bit. Um, you might also know Kay Harris, who uh, has done tremendous, tremendous work, um, specifically, but not exclusively in the Asbury Park community where she grew up. Um, had a pop-up museum there uh, last summer, or the summer before actually, um, and is in the process uh, because she's a, a very important member of the uh, Asbury Park Historical Society of creating a new, more permanent museum. And as I hope you know, Asbury Park history is well beyond music. Her own family has got a fascinating history with its roots in Asbury Park. Um, so uh, that's something to, to look, look out 
uh, find out about. One of our, I think, underrated and, and should be more famous historians that a lot of us know, Ed Razor, um, who is done has done so many things for for our county uh, over the years because he started out doing research into what seems like you know pretty pedestrian kind of stuff uh, graveyard locator books um, uh, and when I first came across them when I was doing research at the county clerk's office in the uh, in the deed room looking up old deeds and trying to figure out who owned what uh, all of the title searches told me about Ed Razor and this book that they use to this day. He's since done books on Mercer and Middlesex County. And it's a comprehensive, he's holding it there in his hands, comprehensive look at all of the graveyards in our county. But it goes beyond that because he talks about the history of the graveyards, who owned the property, who's buried there. And it's just this wonderful, wonderful resource. resource. Uh, Ed himself, uh, as far as I know, probably has the deepest roots of anyone I've ever met in uh, Monmouth County, because quite literally, he's a descendant of this woman, who I'll bet a lot of you know about, Penelope Stout, who was shipwrecked on Sandy Hook in the early 17th century, um, was rescued by Lenape Indians, uh, brought back to life, she was at the verge of death, and then uh, had a slew of children, 12, I think, at least, um, and is in some ways the progenitor of, of Monmouth County um, ancestry. Um, Ed's roots, as I've gotten to know him over the years, uh, go well beyond the Stout family. You name a famous historic figure in Monmouth County, and more times than not, Ed will have uh, that person in his ancestry. Um, so just a fascinating guy. Uh, you know, getting up there in, in age, but uh, still active and, and doing a whole lot of, of research to this day. Oh, there is one more early Monmouth County historian of note that I want to talk about. I'll bet everybody on this call has referred to, read, and I bet a lot of you own the history of Monmouth County by that guy, Franklin Ellis. And I've used that book for years. It's a 900 page book, and then it's got an index, which is probably another couple hundred pages, um, with virtually everything and everyone you want to know about Monmouth County. Um, and I wanted to find out about Franklin Ellis. And as I started to look into him for the profile in the book, it turns out that the guy was usually productive. Um, in you know less than 10 years, he's putting out 12 of these huge volumes, not just about Monmouth County, but other places in the Northeast. Um, in one two-year period in particular, he produces four huge volumes, about six different counties, as far flung as Michigan and New York, um, around 1885, the same time he's doing the history of Monmouth County. And I began to wonder as I found out about these books, how is this guy traveling? I mean, he's not on horseback, he's taking trains, maybe. But how's he doing all this work? Uh, so I started to look into him and I could find nothing, no paper trail. There's no records anywhere of a guy named Franklin Ellis, with the exception of a, if you will, a playboy kind of character down in Washington, D.C., who spent a lot of time golfing and, and doing other things, who certainly wasn't our Franklin Ellis. Um, but there's no paper trail. Um, I looked a little closer and in the preface that he writes to this book, our book, he said that it's presented to its patrons for their approval. And I began to think that what he was doing was an early form of promotional advertising. And I came to believe that what he had done was he had gone into these various places or he had representatives go into these various counties and asked locals to write up their memoirs or their uh, knowledge histories of particular parts, city by city, in most cases, town by town, um, and then uh, compiled the book. Um, so because the book was published in Philadelphia, 
I looked for R.T. Peck and Company and I could find no records, but I did find a record of a contemporary Philadelphia publishing firm called Peck and Everts. And it turns out that these two men were in business, business for a short time publishing books. They had some kind of falling out and they separated. Um, but one of the partners was listed for years and years as a printer and a proofreader in the business directories from Philadelphia in that time period. And what I determined was that in fact, there was nobody named Franklin Ellis, that Franklin Ellis is a pseudonym and it's in all likelihood, this guy who was the partner with Mr. Everts, a guy named Robert Peck. Uh, he's got a little bit of a trail, but Franklin, Franklin Ellis leaves nothing. So um, I'm going to put an open challenge out there that if anybody can find more information than I was able to find, I'd certainly like to hear about it, either about Robert Peck or what I believe is a pseudonym, a man named Franklin Ellis. So before we get to any, any questions, uh, I want to send this greeting out to all of you. And like all of us, we're looking forward to a new and more exciting and certainly a safer 2021. Um, while we're uh, entertaining questions, I, I want to bring an offer to you that um, if you would like, uh, I would provide through the Monmouth County Historic Association and, and split the profits with them, frankly. Um, you can get both of these books to preserve and protect that we've talked about tonight a little bit and my former book a couple years ago, Hidden History of Monmouth County. You can get both of them signed and dedicated if you'd like for $22. They make good Christmas gifts. And if you'd like to do that, you can get a hold of Dana Howell down there. There's her email. And um, she'll let you know how to do that. So uh, with that, Dana, I'm open to uh, any questions. If you want to invite people to, to ask you uh, questions and you can relay them, um, sure. I'll be glad to do that. Okay. It's popping up on the bottom. So does anybody have any questions about tonight? Great presentation. Thank you. So I'm looking here at the chats and um, uh, a lot of folks are, are talking about their own personal history, which I love this. I see Victoria Sharp is saying, I'm a descendant of Charles Horner of Monmouth County. He has mistakes in his book. And, and I, would, I would agree with you. Uh, I don't know his specific mistakes, uh, but I am sure and uh, inadvertently, and I hate to admit it, that I'll probably have mistakes in some of my books. Um, and I always welcome when and if anyone finds those to contact me and correct me um, for, you know, theoretically at least in future volumes, but also for my own edification. Uh, and I think that's true for pretty much everybody who writes a, a historical book. You know, you can go on as many sources as you can get, uh, but inevitably, um, you know, misinformation creeps in, let's say it that way. Um, anybody else have a specific question? I'm looking at a very lot of nice comments here. Um, somebody is saying that they went on Amazon to buy Slavery of Freedom in the Rural North by Graham Hodges for $40. Uh, that's probably true. Um, it's a paperback. Um, and there's, uh, as far as I know, they haven't done a reprinting, but they're available out there. Uh, I bought a few on Amazon that way. Um, I see someone named Senator McNamara saying she's also a descendant of Penelope Stout and she's got Throckmortons and Woolies in her family. Those of you who know Monmouth County history recognize Throckmortons and Woolies. Uh, I live in a house that was built in 1892 here in Farmingdale by a guy named Asher B. Woolley, who was from Long Branch. Um, the Woolies are very, very tough to do genealogy on. I trust them more than the rest of us because there's just an enormous number of them. They go way back to the early days of Shrewsbury in the 17th century. Um, who else is commenting here? My friend Robin Blair is saying, thanks for a very nice presentation. Thank you, Robin, for everything you do as well for history, particularly at the T. Thomas Fortune Foundation. Um, uh, by the way, uh, we probably should give even more credit to the Monmouth County Library System for co-sponsoring this event. 
I happen to think, and I've been all over the state at various places, that we have the best library system in the state of New Jersey, um, just in sheer volume and the things that they do. And please visit their website because it's more than just books, folks, especially these days. The number of programs they put on is just enormous and, and wonderful. Um, oh, look like Gary Soreski is on. In fact, he's saying hi. Hello, Gary. Glad, glad to see you're here as well. Hope I did you justice. Um, while I'm looking at that, I'll give you one more little preview. Uh, coming up in January, a couple of short weeks from now, January 4th, as a matter of fact, my next book is coming out. And the reason I uh, am indebted to Graham Hodges is because this book, and by the way, Walter Grayson, my friend, wrote the foreword for me, uh, is a compilation of stories of slavery all over New Jersey. Um, embarrassingly, I hope you know that we were the last northern state to abolish slavery in, that occurred in 1866. So I put together uh, a lot of stories and some uh, individual personal research that I had done uh, this man on the cover is Charles Reeves. He was born enslaved in Middletown, and I know his descendants uh, very well. Um, they're involved in a project with me to um, kind of rehabilitate the Cedarview Cemetery in Lincroft next to St. Leo's, which is an, a historic African-American cemetery. Um, another special offer. I'm giving you a lot of Christmas gift ideas here, aren't I? Uh, if you'd like, you can get that book. Um, you can send me an email right there, and when that comes out uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to get you a copy of that signed and dedicated, if that's what you like. Um, Mary Hussey says she's already ordered hers. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Rick, uh, Tom is asking you, he said, how, how did you pick the people that were in the presentation out of all of the people in your book? Uh, you mean the To Preserve and Protect book? Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, there, you know, there are 50 folks in that book. Uh, roughly 10 of them have passed, and the other 40, uh, some of whom you heard about tonight, uh, are um, still living and still working. Um, and um, to be honest with you, uh, there's always subjectivity to these things. Christine and I sat and we looked at uh, many of the famous books that that have been published, and also uh, decided that um, you know we, we had limited budget. We could only do so much for, um, uh, you know, the, the limited uh, time that we had, and uh, it was a, it was a struggle. You know, there are some people that I wish we would have had room to include, and um, we did the best we can. Uh, again, not to slight anybody who doesn't appear in the book, and maybe someday, since it's a county publication, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, Susan Rosenberg, my friend, is asking in the chat, do I have a bibliography to share? So in both of these books, uh, in fact, in all my books, I make a point of it, uh, I do an extensive bibliography. I'm particularly happy with the one on To Preserve and Protect because everyone in this book, all 50 folks uh, who wrote about Monmouth County, their Monmouth County publications are in the bibliography as well as other things they wrote outside of Monmouth County. Um, and the same with all the books. I, you know, um, I, I think a book without a bibliography uh, is half a book, in my personal opinion. Um, Kay Harris is reminding me that I'll I'll be presenting about the uh, the book on slavery in uh, February at the Asbury Park Museum by Zoom. Also, we're going to launch that book, meaning this book, uh, through the T. Thomas Fortune Foundation in January. Um, you can look them up and find out about, about that talk. So uh, other questions, live or in person? Um, do you have anything uh, that you see, Dana, that I'm trying to read through them here? Uh, no, that's it for comments. Could you go back to the slide with the uh, memberships? Um, I think we missed that in the beginning. Uh, which one? Way back at the beginning of our presentation? Yeah, back in the beginning when we talked about the membership um, benefits. Uh, I, you know what? I don't think we have that slide. I think we took that one out. But you want to talk to the membership benefits? Yeah. No, I was just, you had mentioned great holiday gifts. And I was thinking that um, a membership to the Monmouth County Historical Association, not only does it support us, but it's just a really nice 
gift to give somebody, especially the person that has everything. You know, well, you so, know what? I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And and obviously, thank you for sponsoring this. But uh, folks, this has been a tough year for everybody, and um, organizations like the Monmouth County um, Library and also obviously the Monmouth County Historic Association. Um, have a tough time with fundraising when we're all um, self-quarantined. So uh, I would urge you for, well, what is the current membership? Is it $25, Dana, for the- It's 35 at the, it's 35 at the individual level and then it, it goes up from there. So all of the levels are um, spelled out at mammothhistory.org. Okay, mammothhistory.org. Uh, and by the way, uh, and I'll give Dana a plug, she's a wonderful librarian there. Um, and if you haven't been to that headquarters building at Court Street in Freehold, uh, when, and, and the website will outline that, when you can again, please do. Um, Melissa Ziober, who we talk about later, curated the Bruce Springsteen exhibit. That's on hold, I believe. But their holdings are fantastic um, art and artifacts. And the library itself has got books that when I walk in there, I find it hard for me to leave because there's just more and more and more about Monmouth County history and a whole genealogy section. So if you're looking for information about your deep roots in Monmouth County, it's a good chance you're gonna find it there. So certainly um, if you can uh, think about um, uh, going on, and I, I believe it's a probably, I don't know, talk to your tax advisor, it might be even a tax deductible donation if you join, I'm not sure. Uh, as, as well as, by the way, I have to tell you the Monmouth County Library, please, during these days, um, support that, that wonderful system as best you can. Uh, anybody else have any questions? I'm, I'm scrolling down here trying to see if I missed anybody. Um, let's see. Jacques Enjoyed this presentation. What love Monmouth County. Everybody on this call loves Monmouth County. And you know, <laughs> I, not a day goes by. I'm sure you're this way too. I grew up in Hudson County, but moved down here ooh, 60 years ago. How fortunate I know I am to live in this wonderful place uh, with all it has culturally and uh, it's, its scenic beauty. And uh, like you all, uh, even though it looks kind of Christmassy and white now, we all can't wait for the spring and summer when uh, the shore becomes our own once again. Um, Sandra McNamara is informing us again that Woolies and Throckmorton's had loyalist ancestors. And what she's talking about is um, uh, a really interesting topic during the Revolutionary War. And you're gonna find that out uh, when Mike Adelberg speaks. Uh, is it next month Mike Adelberg speaking? I think he is. Yes, next. Mm -hmm. Because he, he's the first one I ever saw referred, he's done a lot about Revolutionary War history in Mountain County, referred to the Revolutionary War here as a civil war because within families like Throckmorton's and Woolies and many, many others, you had people that were loyalists to the British crown and you had so-called rebels uh, the people that became the patriots in our, in our understanding. Um, those are fascinating things to read about. So it's no surprise that in everyone's family, you're going to have people on both sides of that conflict. Um, I don't know if anybody else has got any other questions. What are you, what were you seeing, Dana, anything? Uh, no, I think, well, Jacques was asking if you know um, any resources for railroads and streetcar lines of Monmouth? Ooh, so that's a really good question. I'm not a specific um, railroad streetcar guy, but I know there are a couple of books um, you could find. At, a lot of you, I'm sure, know the Arcadia Publishing Company who did my uh, Lost Amusement Park books. They've done, and Randy Gabrielin has done probably 30 different ones of various towns. Look at the Arcadia Publishing catalog online. And I know they've done, and I don't know who the authors were, things about railroads in New Jersey and probably trolley lines. And there's some other books about that whose, whose authors I can't, I can't recall right now. But there is, there is some significant um, uh, research and, and writing done about that. I live in Farmingdale and Farmingdale was a, uh, a really a, a, a crucial point for where several of the railroad lines in the 19th century met. Um, as did places like Atlantic Highlands and Long Branch and all these other places. So uh, 
Somebody else was talking about Indian Trails to Iron Rails. Of course, the famous Thomas Leonard book. Thomas Leonard's in this book. I didn't talk about him tonight, but he certainly writes about uh, the impact of the rail lines in specifically Atlantic Highlands. So that's, uh, that's a way to, to uh, follow up. But again, I urge you to do something I never did when I was a kid, is to look at the bibliographies of any of these folks in any of their writings, and you'll find out their source materials, and you could probably find out what you need to find out for yourself. Um, I just saw somebody saying here, oh, it's Sandra McNair, you must be related to everybody in, in, in the county. She says she has uncles Richard Lippincott and Huddy White. Um, so you, a lot of you know the, the Huddy Lippincott story in that Revolutionary War. Um, Joshua Huddy was hanged in Highlands at a place called Gravelly Point where I spent my summers as a youth. They did not know that then, uh, but I since come to know it. Gary Sarecki, the Sarecki knows a lot about the, the Huddy story too. Fascinating part of our history, which brings into play George Washington and an international incident after the war. It's just unbelievable history that we have in this county, you know coming up on 400 years of really, really cool stuff. Uh, let's see, who else here? Um, I think I think we're about done. Anybody there want something? Dana, that you can spot? Nope, uh, Gary's just letting us know that the Monmouth County Archives has an exhibit catalog about Joshua Huddy. It's great, it's very in-depth. There you go. Um, and I, I'm waiting for Gary's book on Joshua Huddy, which I know is coming one of these years, Gary. Okay, folks. and then go ahead. There was Trolley Car tre Trolley Car Treasury was another book on uh, trolley cars. Oh, okay, so that's Kay Harris talking. I didn't know that Trolley Car Treachery. You know who wrote that? Yeah, Susan has the copy. I sent it to her. Let Susan, you know the the author. She's probably on mute. Well, it sounds like a mystery story. It sounds great. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's an excellent book. It is. Um, covers the history of trolley cars in, in the country. And it has a lot of pictures and visuals in it as well. Terrific. Uh, if you haven't figured out, there's Kay right there on the book cover. So thank you, Kay. Okay, uh, with that, by the way, you have my email there at the back um, somewhere. Where, and if you want that, you can always um, get a hold of me. And um, I welcome any comments. Uh, about anything. I'm, I'm always interested in what we do here in this county and I'd uh, love to hear from any of you. So uh, Dana, I want to thank you for all your help. I know you did a lot of work putting this together and do you want to give a little plug for the next couple coming up too? Uh, yeah, well we have um, Michael Adelberg coming up in January. It's the third Thursday. I'm not, I can't remember the date right now, um, but he's going to be doing a presentation on pre-war tremors for the American Revolution in Monmouth. So He's really a fantastic speaker as well. I know you know Michael Edelberg, right, Rick? I do. Yeah, he's, he's, okay. he's really interesting. And he's done, yeah. uh, he grew up in Manalapan. He lives, he lives down in Virginia now, but he's done an awful lot of research into Monmouth County history. Uh, he's by January the way, 21st. Notes. Pardon? January 21st. January 21st, okay. And your schedule of, of upcoming events is, I'm sure, at the website, huh? Yes, yeah. By the way, I'm Monmouth seeing a note here Network. that uh, for the railroad aficionados, um, a friend of mine, uh, Mark White, who's the president of the Monmouth County Genealogy Society, knows a lot, apparently, I didn't know he knew this, about railroads in Monmouth County. So uh, look up online the Monmouth County Genealogy Society, and Mark White's the president. And so those of you who are interested in uh, railroad and trolley history, I'm sure he'll uh, be glad to correspond with you. Um, there's also the Monmouth County Archives Transportation Exhibit Catalog which uh, had to be part of, uh, Mary's telling us here, had to be part of, I would assume, Gary's Archives and History Day too. Um, so those catalogs, by the way, that I talked about, I'm sure there's a copy, at least one copy at the archives today. That'd be a great introduction to any number of topics in our history. So we're coming up on 757, it says here. So um, thank you everyone for, um, taking part in this and stay warm and safe and have a great holiday and 2021 is going to be a great year for all of us I'm just sure so with that I'll say good night and Dana once again thank you for a great job thank you too Rick have a good night everybody